in honor of Thanksgiving, who's your most ridiculous, weird, or creepy relative? I was about 11 or so, when my step uncle asked me under his breath, hey baby, wanna wrestle? Before nudging me with his elbow and giving me a wink. Being young and naive, I figured he meant something along the lines of WWE, so I replied jokingly that there's no way he could beat me. He smiled and said, oh, I think we'd both win. I sat there confused for a while. Makes me shudder and creeped out every time I think about it. I had an uncle who was certified crazy. In and out of the hospital his whole life. Wrote rambling letters to the president, etc. He had three kids my age, and two my son's age. One son killed himself with a circular saw, and one stabbed his mother to death. Third son is a self-made multi-millionaire. I have a great uncle that is a walking, talking steerier type of a trucker found in a 1970s or 80s movie. Tight Wrangler jeans, plaid shirt, cowboy boots, the whole lot. He was a trucker for over 40 years, and has seen and heard some stuff. The things that come out of his mouth are interesting to say the least. Upon meeting my wife at Christmas 8 years ago, he said that she wasn't bad for a white girl, he did d, how does a one armed man count his change gag, and basically joked with her a lot. He called me up on my high school graduation day, and all he said was, hey whistle donk, good on you for finishing high school, unlike my other son of a bish nephew. He always has some off color joke, usually at the expense of someone who has not been around the family much. He was in the air force, drove a truck a bunch, owned several biker bars, once rode the rails from Ohio to California to win a bet, and has been married 5 times, his longest being his current marriage which is going on 40 years. He ridiculous in a fun and crass way, and is the highlight of nearly every holiday or event he comes to, because he shows up, has some laughs, tells some jokes and leaves. It's sad that his health is going downhill and this is likely our final holiday season with him. Even though he is laid up in a nursing home bed trying to get over his latest health scare, he is still the same old crazy man he always was. My mom has managed to ruin every special occasion since I can remember. One year, she was so angry, about something, that she tried to force me to eat raw eggs and cat fesses for dinner. Last year, she insisted that our deceased cat sit with us at the table and refused to eat until my dad brought out the urn with the cat's ashes and put it on the table. Wanna know how to quickly ruin a 6 year old's birthday? Take a present out of the closet, and run it over with your car a bunch of times in front of your kid. My biological uncle Troy. I've only met him a few times, but goddamn he's creepy. He got mad when my mom, who was married to my adoptive father, wouldn't snuggle with him, that I wouldn't tell him when my period was and that my 5 year old sister couldn't hang out with him alone, she's no relation of his. My great aunt by marriage is a heinous, social climbing witch. One thanksgiving her biological granddaughter and step granddaughter were playing together, all with her real granddaughter's toys. Her step granddaughter picked one up, and my aunt plucked it out of her hands, saying, excuse me, but that's my granddaughter's toy. The girl was 4 and my aunt is the only grandmother she has ever known. Another story, she didn't tell her only brother that their father had died until after the funeral. They had had some falling out about their dad's estate, and he lived across the country. A real class act. She once went on a rant to my Irish grandfather about how much good Oliver Cromwell did for England. He now hisses and growls any time she walks into a room. Honestly, she's so cartoonishly evil that it bonds the rest of the family together. There's nothing like a common enemy. Thanksgiving will consist of my dad belittling everyone individually, talking over everyone, then exploding in rage over something minor, then telling us all to lighten up. Then he'll get comfortable and begin lecturing us on everyone he hates, and why they're so screwed up. Maybe another age explosion when coffee isn't being made for him. Ah, the holy days. Not creepy, just ridiculous. I had an aunt who, every year, would show up to Thanksgiving dinner and insist on taking a nap on the couch instead of eating, because, I'm full, we stopped at Burger King on the way here. Yaddle's cooking must suck. Once, on the way to my first Thanksgiving with my girlfriend, now wife, 
She and her mother insisted on stopping at Cowles Jr. I was all, bah, bah but Thanksgiving food is the best ever? They said, not when, name of now wife's sister-in-law, makes it. They weren't kidding. It was the worst tea day food ever. Everything was crap, but the piece the resistance was, they made a total of about one cup of gravy for everyone to share. We stopped for burgers on the way home too. This topic reminded me that tomorrow I'm going to have to hug every member of my family and thank them for being normal. And that's how you become the weird, creepy relative. I have an aunt and uncle, married, not siblings, that dress alike. Like literally wear the same exact outfit to almost all events. It's usually traditional men's clothing like a Hawaiian print shirt and khaki pants. So, it's not just coordinating colors but the exact same items in their respective sizes. The only exception is, I've seen them at a formal function once where she wore a dress and he wore a suit. But anything casual, it's a matching outfit. My uncle is a really nice guy, and seems pretty normal aside from the matching thing. I don't really get it, and it definitely gets some odd looks. The ironic part is that they have a set of twin girls who are in high school now, and have hated dressing alike since they were old enough to pick their own clothes out. Ridiculous, she comes in through marriage, my wife has a cousin who is our age, early 30s, she manages an art gallery, she lives as an artist, named her kid bread, wears designer clothes, hairstyle is some sort of huge mohawk that look ridiculously oversized, like it's a joke, but it turns out she isn't really the manager, she just manages ticket sales which devolved into she sits at the window and sells the tickets for people entering, and later it turned out her rich dad just gave her a ton of money so she could pursue her dream, which is to live the life of an artist, and name her kid ducking bread. I've only seen her maybe three times. Most of the rest of the family acts like she doesn't exist, but I never forget bread. My uncle is the most ridiculous person I know. Family get togethers usually involve him not being invited, but my grammar guilt trips us into asking him to join us. Everything goes smoothly until someone makes a comment that sets him off. For example, my aunt said that her son was interested in becoming a police officer. Crazy uncle went off, started cussing everyone out, throws the food we've been cooking on the floor, punches a wall, and walks out. It became a game for a wall to see who would make him flip out without trying. Eventually I just stopped talking to my family, we talk maybe once a year, because the drama is ridiculous. Long story short, my aunt poisoned my cousin. It was Munchausen's by proxy. She was admitted in the hospital, dying, and we flew out to their province to say goodbye to her. After being in the hospital for a while, where her mom couldn't poison her, she started to get better, and got to go home. A few years later, my aunt shaves her own head and says she has cancer. We all believed her, until her ex-husband, my uncle, went to the hospital with flowers to visit her, and nurse confirms that there is no person in that hospital with that name. Edit, took out more than half the story to make it more vague to protect family's identity, lol. 7000 people got to read the full story though. Ridiculous, I'm a law student. During my first year I was home for Thanksgiving. And my uncle, and his in-laws, asked what type of law I wanted to do. I had no idea at that point, but had just read some interesting environmental admin stuff in one of my classes, so I said, I'm not sure, maybe something in environmental law or government. His in-law asked what that meant, or would look like. My uncle, who works for a factory, chimed in from the other side of the room with, that means she wants to take our jobs. I had no response. Sigh. This is a repost of mine, but I think it more than qualifies. As a young man, my great grandpa moved to America from Japan. My great grandma was a second generation Japanese, and they lived in a town composed of Japanese immigrants. Because of this my great grandpa, a very intelligent, but insanely stubborn man, decided there was no reason for him to learn English. So he didn't. If he was mad. He'd absolutely shred you in Japanese, and if he'd successfully pulled a prank and made a fool of you, he did the same. He loved pranks. His favorite victims were the grandkids, and afterwards he would point at them and scream with laughter until he couldn't breathe. 
Another favored activity involved chasing birds around the yard with a fishing net, screaming and cursing at them because they always got away. The neighborhood thought he was insane, until one day he did catch a bird. He kept it in a cage and used it for arguments. If people doubted him about some scheme of his, he pointed at the bird and told the story. He was a crazy guy in a good way. When my mother met him as a teenager, they hit it off tremendously. They became great friends, this tiny old Japanese man and this tall gangly white girl, but all they did was smile and nod at each other through every family dinner and party, because they couldn't speak to each other at all. He'd just sit around with a beer, no clue what anybody was saying, unless they translated for him, but they sat together, and whenever they caught each other's eye they would smile and laugh. She tells me he was one of the sweetest and funniest people she'd ever met, and that she still misses his huge smile and childish sense of humor. Actually, he did learn one English term. It was for his very favorite thing, strawberry soda. Oh, how he loved it. He loved it like nothing else. He figured that since it's something you drink, the proper name for it was soda water. Or as he pronounced it, soda water. Unfortunately, when he was still young he developed an incurable disease that was a death sentence in those days. His family did everything they could to keep him healthy, and that meant taking away his precious strawberry soda. He was heartbroken. Whenever someone had a bottle of soda, they would try to sneak it into the house past him. His favorite place to doze off was the living room couch, so it wasn't easy. Every time someone sneaked in, and he heard the squeak of the cap being opened, He'd jump bolt upright, point and scream, soda water, soda water, like an excited little boy. They'd try to tell him it was bad, but it was hopeless. He begged and begged, soda water, became his rebel's cry against the illness, and the one thing he demanded without fail. At first it was kind of cute, but by the end it was heartrending. He would open his eyes, see the bottle, and weakly whisper, soda water. Finally the doctors told them, he's dying anyway. At least let him die happy. From then on, he got all the soda water he wanted, until the last painful day of his death. By then his wife had long since died in a care home, after she suffered a massive stroke that left her unable to speak or even move for the last 10 years of her life. He visited every day to sit with her and care for her fondly. As silly or stubborn as he could be at times, he was a strong and caring person until the end. And on it, he got his soda water too. Not really creepy, but kinda just weird and nobody likes her. My aunt basically divorces people for a living. Not 100% sure how it all works, but I know she's been married a number of times to rich men and she's made bank every time there was a divorce. She has some oil company now, not sure if she owns it or whatever, but it's named after her. We always go to her place for Thanksgiving and she's the wannabe southern belle. Has a ton of farm animals, rustic decor, and a literal shrine to Trump. When I was a kid I was a total introvert who only ever played video games all day, so all my relatives thought very little of me. I've grown quite a lot, but now when I see them for Thanksgiving and whatnot, I don't wanna talk to any of them so I just chill wherever they're not. They all think I'm some sort of pathetic loser, which is only partially true. Anyway, my aunt always interrogates me every time I'm over to see if I've become a quarterback heartthrob whatever. Ugh, no thanks. I have an uncle who hates immigrants even though his parents were immigrants, they passed away years ago, and tries to argue that his parents immigrated the right way. When you try to challenge him he just repeats that they did it right. The irony to this is that his father used to proudly tell the story of how he sneaked into the USA via Montreal twice before he was naturalized. He claims he does not remember his father ever telling that story, 